For many, being able to play your video games on as large of a display as possible is the end goal. I mean, this beautiful TV behind me, 65 wonderful inches for Earthworm Jim to look terrific. But for many, and at times myself included, portability is more important. Having a small display that displays 1080p or higher that you can take with you practically anywhere, that's a really cool option out there. And on a lot of these, you can also go ahead and connect them to your computer as a secondary display. And that's what we have here today and what we are gonna be talking about. We have two LCD displays from Ymaxit that promise to really make it easier for us to play our games on the go and be more productive as a YouTuber. Hey everybody, Gary here from Rocksolid Productions. I do appreciate you stopping by and checking out our episode that we have here today. Now, we have talked about WiMAX at monitors in the past. I will have a link for you right here on screen where you can go ahead and check out our earlier review of one of their monitors. Now, these a little bit different than that one. They're both smaller than what that monitor was. They're also touch screen. That's really unique. I'm looking forward to testing out and seeing what that does for me and what that provides for me both on the PC, using as a Samsung DeX secondary monitor and hooking up to my Nintendo Switch. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna unbox both of these, check them out. Oh, and the smaller one here, you can actually mount a Raspberry Pi to and have it be an all-in-one self-contained unit. Let's go take a closer look. So here we have the box on the bench and everything. I mean, very plain and whatnot. But you know what? I don't care what's on the box. I care about what's in the box. So let's take a look at it. I do want to thank Ymaxit for sending us one of these for review. Now, they're not uh, reviewing anything that goes live before we post it. And all my opinions here are going to be my own. But they did provide it for review. Nice looking display here to begin with. Very similar to like... I would say a, uh, an Amazon Fire tablet or a uh, iPad Pro. Bigger bezels though, that is one of the things I do wanna say and I happen to have, you know, I wasn't even intending on doing this as I drop them over here. I happen to have my calipers here. Let's see how thick the bezels are. So you're at 22.2 millimeter on the bottom and on top you're looking at about seven. 9.2 and it should be 9.2 on that side too. Yep. Okay. And thickness wise, we are looking at nine millimeters thick. So looking at the display itself on this side here, you have an exit button an up down toggle switch that also will push in and a headphone jack there. You also have a speaker output right here. On this side, you have your HDMI, I believe it's a mini HDMI in, USB-C, USB-C, and another speaker on that side there. You do have, this is nice, this is an addition from what I've tested from them in the past. You do have uh, holes where you can use this with a monitor stand too, so I'm gonna set that aside for now. Please contact us if you need support. I will tell you, anytime I've had to contact Ymaxit, they've been great to deal with. Andy Sign, uh, and they are the parent company of Ymaxit, a uh, little lens cleaner to keep the display clean and everything. Instruction manual, looks like we have a USB-C to C cable, that's for power. And HDMI to HDMI micro or mini. I always forget which is which. Um, power brick, oh, they've included a power brick. That's awesome. Uh, looks like five volt, 2000 milliamp output. So five volt, two amp is what this outputs. That's important to note if you're gonna use something else for power. USB to USB-C. Now this is interesting because in the past, the um, the version that I tested had a like a portfolio case that you worked as a stand. This is a generic stand that it comes with, but I'll tell you, looking at it, I like this a lot more than the portfolio one. Now, it does not provide protection while traveling, so there's that. But this is definitely going to hold the monitor at a much better display more consistently without screwing around. I hated having to use that case as a display holder. And just gonna make sure that there's nothing underneath. Nope, that's just the box. So we'll toss the bottom of the box aside. Oh, dude, that's wonderful. That's so good. I like that a lot. Now I have made 3D printed versions of these in the past myself. And I've also purchased off of Amazon you know, like these guys in the past 
that I can use with my portable monitors like this. But the fact that this now includes something like that, that's much more usable than the transport case that they've provided in the past. So one of the things I wanna check and see is if I can use the switch directly on here, no dock, no like, no adapters, no anything. I wanna see if I can go straight into this with the switch. So again, just looking at the user menu real quick, what it comes with is the monitor itself. It's mini HDMI, okay, to HDMI, USB-C to C cable, the USB-A 3.0 to USB-C cable, the 5 volt, 2 amp power output, foldable kickstand, user manual, cleaning cloth, and warranty card. Um, so the function description, uh, exit menu, wheel button, auxiliary, okay, those are all pretty straightforward. Visa, that's uh, V-E-S-A, that's the mount type that I was thinking of. I just could not remember what it was called. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll get our switch hooked up here. All right, so we are gonna try this first with just the USB-C to C cable. So just to test this out, I'm gonna try it just powering off the switch, not using a, a separate dock or anything along those lines because I believe I was able to do that with the old one. So we have our switch here, as you can see, it's not connected to anything. I'm just going to plug that in there and plug this into the side of the display and see if we get anything. So it's getting power. So interesting, it's able to draw power off of our switch, but no signal, at least using that port. We're gonna try using the top port and see what that gives us. Still showing no signal. Okay, so nothing off of there whatsoever. Next up, what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna connect power to the side of this while still connecting just the cable and seeing if that's the ticket that we need. And that was indeed the issue. Let's, uh, let's give you a little bit better view here. So giving you a bit of a closer look here, I mean, it's, it's working now that we have everything set up with the separate power supply. So that is uh, key and I do have my controller here. We can scroll through our switch display, which is awesome. So now let's take a look at some of the you know, menu settings that we have in here. So you can adjust brightness, contrast, game mode, standard uh, RTS, FPS, performance mode, standard. We're gonna put performance mode, black equalizer, we'll back out of here. Color effect, I can adjust the saturation, the hue and the sharpness. It is connected and registering USB type C. It's only outputting 720p, so that's interesting too. I can reset, auto color adjust, other, other auto image. So I can also reset the image, uh, any changes I've made, auto color adjust auto image adjustment there too. Ultra HDR mode is auto, eye protection is off, 3D sound is off, anchor is off, and then source is auto, language is English, aspect ratio is wide, and I can adjust the volume in here. I can adjust the temperature of the image, the on-screen display settings, and then we are back to pictures. So what I wanna see first and foremost is the overall lag, delay, latency, things along those lines. Now, uh, one final thing, this is supposed to be touchscreen compatible, but does not register anything touchscreen wise here. I'm not completely surprised by that. So one of my tests by always is to go through and play some Street Fighter II Turbo. Audio is good, I'll say that much. And the main thing I'm testing on here for is lag, delay, latency things like that. Um, this thing is playing great. Basically provide an input. Oh no, I had my perfect and it was just ruined. I had just a simple punch there. Audio is quite good now. You're seeing probably a little bit of flicker on the screen. That's just owing to the refresh rate of what I'm recording to what's on the display. I'm actually gonna change my camera real quick to 30 frames per second. That should eliminate that issue. Actually looking at it, 30 frames per second make it, made it worse. So uh, yeah, we'll go back to what I was at. So I will say that while I'm seeing that, that fuzziness and that refresh rate, as I look through the lens finder on the camera, I am not seeing that as I play. So that's, that's a good thing. 
Oh, nice one-two combo there. Now, not everybody knows this, but the mark on, I think it's on, not Zangief's chest, but on, uh, oh, who does the dragon fire? Dalsim is actually from a dragon fireball from Ryu. Got him. All right, so that looked good there. Uh, let's take a look at what the NES Online games look like. I had heard that Dig Dug 2 and Mappy Land were coming to the NES Online. We'll play some Dig Dug. Oh, this is Dig Dug 2, which I don't know that I've ever played. Okay, we're, we're not going to play a whole lot of that. <laughs> not a good game. Uh, where is Punch Out? There's Punch Out. Again, Punch Out, another great test of lag, delay, latency. I mean, right from the word go, I mean, granted, it's Glass Joe, so it's no major issue here. But, I mean, press a button, a button responds. That's really, really good as far as just the overall responsiveness. It's nice as well. I will say that the earlier 15, I think it was a 15.7-inch one that I tested from YMAX, it actually did have some lag and latency in it. This feels more responsive. Now, I want you to let me know down in the comments, did you know that you could press down twice and have little Mac dodge? All right. We knocked out Glass Joe. I used to be a lot more, like, reactive in my fights with uh, Von Kaiser, but I've learned that if you're more aggressive with them, you get more stars, and you overall, it's easier to beat them. You don't have to punch counterpunch with them as much, I guess, is what I'm saying. In a lot of ways, he's actually become more easy for me to fight now than even Glass Joe, just because Glass Joe just blocks. Sit down. Okay, we are through uh, the first two opponents through on, on the Switch. Let's try one last game real quick. Now, even though it is a you know, output of a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. As you can see, it's displaying it as 4.3, or 4 by 3, I'm sorry, um, like it should normally. I hate whatever those are. I always thought they were monkeys, but I could be wrong. I still need to see the new movie, too. Everything I have heard is that the Sonic 2 movie is terrific, that Idris Elba does a great job as Knuckles. You know, another game where having quick reaction time is very important, which is good. And thus far, it's, uh, it's played good. Got a hundred rings there. Oh, oh, I would collect a hundred rings and I'd collect a hundred more. All right. Works great on the Switch. I want to test it out using my Samsung phone to see if it works as a secondary DeX display. So off to the side here, I have my Samsung Galaxy Tab S7, and here we have the monitor, and it is mirroring everything that I have on the display. You can see my cursor and everything move. Uh, let us go into, uh, we'll just open up the YouTube channel real quick. Let's check out our boy Trek Yards real quick. So now the audio is currently coming out of my tablet, not out of here. I'm sure that that's something that I can set up, but... Man, that looks great. That is really, really good. I like that quite a bit. The one thing I have to do some research on my end is to find out how, instead of having it mirror from my tablet to here, how I can have it as an extended desktop. Speaking of which, final test for this guy is we are going to set it up with our regular laptop and do a mirrored, or not a mirrored, but do a extended desktop. So here we have it connected to my laptop. And again, I, I apologize for the refresh rate issue. As you can see, it is uh, showing it as the same on both displays. We are going to extend the displays. And now I'm gonna just bring this over from this display. There we go. And here you can see I have one of the models in Cura that I have been working on uh, lately here. I'm actually gonna grab Where's my mouse? There's my mouse, just because I don't like using a trackpad. Well, that's a little bit better. And now we're gonna kinda see here how I can manipulate my model inside of Cura. So, super convenient. I mean, it's not 
as large of a display as what I have on my laptop. And it's not, you know, it, it's, it's smaller overall, but you know what? For a secondary monitor on the go, this is really, really awesome. Let's take a look at the other one really quick. So here we have the smaller model from them. And, oh, this is neat. Um, don't be intimidated by wiring. <laughs> so here you can see the display itself. And again, it is designed to work hand in hand with a Raspberry Pi for you to actually mount everything to the back here, which is really neat. And it's touchscreen. Again, includes a lens cloth, your manual and everything. Uh, what's on? We have cables, we have attachment boards. So it includes attachments and everything for the Raspberry Pi 3B and 4B, along with some other odds and ends in here. Also includes an HDMI cable and looks like a USB to micro USB cable, or yes, micro. So we can use this just to connect to our PC if we want to. Uh, you need the uh, HDMI cable for data transfer, micro USB cable for power. So it does need its own separate power supply. Um, and it kind of walks you through a little bit as far as how to connect everything up here as well. So we are going to do just a basic test on here. And it is a standard HDMI port, which is nice. I like that. That's really interesting. So it looks like for power here, power is also micro USB. So something to be aware of there. So I have everything set up here now with the smaller touch screen and it doesn't respond to touches for the switch. I'm not surprised on that. And I am just using one of the dockless cables, but let's go ahead, let's test this out a little bit too, because it's, I'm pretty intrigued by it. Now, I will tell you there are no speakers built into this. You would have to, to add your own speaker module if you would want such a thing. Oh, Guile was always one of my nemeses. So far, so good as far as the responsiveness on the controls. That's always a good thing. Sonic Boom! Sonic Boom! I mean, beautifully responsive. Now it does have a side control as you just saw where if I had speakers or headphones or something like that plugged in, it would adjust the volume for me. The display looks great, I think. Yeah, overall this works great too. And you know, like I mentioned, you can actually connect a Raspberry Pi 3 or 4 to this to have an all-in-one self-contained system, which is pretty stinking cool. Let's go ahead and wrap things up. I'm a huge fan of portable monitors like these, and I have to admit Wimaxit has really done a nice job improving over their previous models that I had tested. They're much more responsive. I thought the color was a lot more accurate, the speakers sounded better, and there are a lot of little things that they've developed into this, such as the game mode, which I think works a lot better. The fact it has the screw holes on the back on here so that you can use it with the monitor holder, it just, it's great. And then when you add in their new little screen that they have that you can use with the Raspberry Pi, and this is touch screen as well, that's super cool too. Now I do have to thank one of my coworkers for loaning me his Raspberry Pi, I believe this is a Pi 3, just to kind of show you guys. I've never used one of these, so that's why I didn't want to screw up his little system here. But it's one of those that um, Raspberry Pis have also been kind of hard to get a hold of lately, just with everything going on with COVID. They've recently sent out an email kind of talking about their issues that they've been going with with filling their supply chain demands. Hopefully we'll have more Raspberry Pis on the shelf soon. But if you want to pick one of these up, where I find this helpful is if I'm traveling to a convention or something like that, First and foremost, I am, and the guys at, at Tom and Lacey from Do Your Nerd saw this firsthand. If I wasn't at the convention, I was in my hotel room and I was editing. And it's just how I, how I work. This will allow me to do more on the road in a smaller overall space. And I like that a lot. And the fact too, that this is perfectly compatible with the Switch with an external power supply and just the USB-C cable. That is a really, really nice touch. And the speakers even sound better in this one 
than the larger one that I previously previously tested. Overall, like I mentioned, this is a really nice upgrade. I wish it was bigger. I'm a fan of larger displays. I'd love to see them take what they've developed in this one and add it to a 15.6 or seven inch display. That would be even better still. And again, thanks to those guys for sending us one of each of these to go ahead and check out. I really do appreciate it. If you wanna pick either of these up, I will have links down below where you can go ahead and do that. Now, if you wanna check out any of the other portable, easy for me to say, any of the other portable monitor reviews that we've done, any other things that we've done just to make things easier for us to travel and get our work done, I will have those linked for you right now. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you wanna help support Rock Solid Productions and be a part of our community, there's a number of different ways you can do so. First and foremost, join us over on our Patreon page or become a channel member here on YouTube. By joining through either one of those methods, you get early access to just about all of our video content, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. We also give you shout outs at the end of each and every one of our videos. You can also pick up some awesome Rock Solid Productions swag. We've got t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, and more available through our Teespring store on screen right now too. You can also pick up some of our awesome 3D printed cartridge stands, Amiibo holders, Nintendo DS holders, and more by visiting our 3D printer store on screen right now as well. Links for everything will be down below in a pinned comment. If you wanna stay up to date with everything we have going on here at Rock Solid Productions, make sure that you're following us on the different social media networks. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash Productions, Instagram at instagram.com slash Productions GK, and Twitter at Rock Solid Studios. If you're looking to pick this and other retro and modern gaming accessories up, make sure that you head on over to castlemaniagames.com. He has a feature over there called Castle Cash, where the more you spend, the more you earn towards future purchases, and Castle Cash is just like cash. He also offers convenient payment plans for more expensive items over $50. Finally, make sure that you use promo code ROCKSOLID10 when you're shopping at CastlemaniaGames.com as it can save you up to 10% on most items on the website. Again, thank you for watching this episode and I cannot wait to see you again soon.